Hey guys, this is Lynn the Fitness Filipina and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be doing a lower body workout using a kettlebell. I'm going to start this off with a light warm up, about 10 minutes long, which is just some running on the spot and jumping jacks. This will get our heart rate going and get our body ready to go. Next, I'm going to loosen up, especially the hips, as we'll be doing a lot of bending and using stability for this entire workout. Now, it's important to traction through your range of motion to ensure that your body and muscles feel great before we start adding weight. You can do any combination of movements from holding on to something to get more range or stand upright to engage your core and balance. Just be sure to go through these warm-ups to avoid any injuries and get the most out of your workout. Next, I'll introduce resistance by doing simple body weight squats. I'd consider this to be a bridge between my warm-up and the workout. It's similar to the movements we'll be doing with weight, so at this time, I can make sure my hips are working properly and there's no surprises in the range of movement. One last circuit on the floor, really pressing out my hip flexors and abductors before we begin with the kettlebell. The first exercise I'll be doing is a kettlebell lateral goblet squat. Now goblet refers to the position I'm holding the kettlebell by my chest. I'll start with my feet outside shoulder width and pointing slightly outwards. Now you can do this or any of these exercises with a dumbbell if you don't have a kettlebell, but the kettlebell is easier for grip and control. I'll be squatting outside towards each foot, alternating the foot on each repetition. The goblet position allows me to maintain a neutral spine with ease as I don't want to be leaning forward when I go lower. Maintaining a neutral spine maintains the load on the legs and helps avoid injury. The second exercise is the kettlebell split squat. This one involves placing one foot to the rear in an elevated position and holding onto the kettlebell with the same side hand. Now we'll be squatting down with a forward leg while still maintaining proper posture. This one requires more balance and stability. So it's a great exercise to do after we've already placed some load on the legs. You can see I hold my unweighted hand out to the side to assist with stability as I go through the squat. I use a stack of weights for the rearward elevation, but you can use anything from a bench to a BOSU ball if you're looking for more of a challenge. To finish this workout off, I'll be doing a kettlebell sumo squat. The foot positioning is the same as our first exercise, but instead of squatting from side to side in a goblet position, we'll hold the weight between our legs. I'm not looking to bend forward like a deadlift. It's a squat, so I'll be bending at the knees and maintaining a neutral spine. There's no need to rush with this one. It's very important to remain in control with the weight and avoid swinging the kettlebell to the front or rear. The most power will be generated through the legs when you keep the kettlebell's movement directly upwards and downwards. And for my cool down, I'll be walking home. Be sure to stretch after your workout as well. I'll be doing my stretch circuit after my body is cooled down a bit. If you like the video, please subscribe and share and leave a comment with any suggestions or requests. 